eat some more strawberries, huh? Yeah, let's eat some strawberries instead of crackers. Okay, let's do that. I think that'd be a good idea. Good job, all right. While he's eating his morning snack, I thought I would finally update you guys on what's been going on for our next frozen embryo transfer. And the lighting is so bad in here, but this is really the only time I can film. We are at Lake Chelan for Josh's work conference and his work is paying for all of us to be here. So we're kind of making like a little vacation out of it. Our room is a disaster, but I'm so thankful for it because it's got like a mini kitchen. We have two queen beds and then we have his pack and play set up with a little like tent over it to block it out and then a little bit of a bathroom but it works and i'm so glad we brought his high chair toddler life let me tell you if without the high chair he would not be able to sit still and eat so i'm oh my gosh i'm so thankful we decided to bring the high chair the lighting's so bad in this hotel room and you're on my phone i wasn't gonna bring my camera it's just too takes up too much space. But because we're in Lake Chelan and we're not at home, I do have some extra time to finally make a YouTube video and update you guys on what's been going on to prepare for our frozen embryo transfer. So we are still on track for our next <coughs> transfer. Choo, choo, choo. You'll have to excuse all the smacking in the background and me being distracted by this 15 month old. <laughs> Anyways, because I'm not at home, I feel like I have some extra time to finally update you guys. We are on track for our frozen embryo transfer, July 26th still. And I have updated my Instagram family quite a bit on what's been happening with me. But long story short, I've just kind of been really in my head this time around with our frozen embryo transfer. So our last frozen embryo transfer, those of you who are brand new, was two years ago in 2022. Uh, Quinn was transferred in me July 1st. I'm so this time around in 2024, our frozen embryo transfer number two is going to happen July 26th. So far, we're on track for that date. By the way, I'm so sorry. I have not uploaded a, a YouTube video in a couple months. I haven't really been that active on YouTube recently. We have been so busy with our fourplex and being property managers. I've had a lot of things going on at work and life has been so busy with this guy who is a toddler, but he's still not walking. He's almost 16 months, but because of of the torticollis he was born with. Um, that is the reason why he is not walking yet. So we're still doing physical therapy. Now it's every other week doing exercises with him at home. We're getting there. They're not too worried about him yet. So we'll see when he actually walks. Mm -hmm. Okay, cracker. I turned some lights on. So the lighting is probably a little bit better. Also, if you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I upload one video a month, normally at the end of every month. It's the last Sunday of every month, 8 a.m. Pacific Standard yeah, Time. Hello. All about fertility health, IVF, and all in that realm, just focusing on fertility. So if you're brand new, welcome. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for watching this video. And again, I'm sorry it's been a couple months since I've last updated you guys and talked with you guys and uploaded a video. It's so good, it's so good. So just to summarize everything that's been happening the last couple of months, like I said, we're still on track for our frozen embryo transfer July 26th. And I am on the same medication regimen as I was two years ago. And so I will put on the screen my calendar for our frozen embryo transfer and when all the meds are supposed to start. So I am also planned to have a fully medicated frozen embryo transfer just like last time. So currently I am on the birth control pill to regulate my cycle so they can time the transfer. That's exactly what I was on last time. So I am currently on the pill. Now my blood pressure has been an issue and those of you who follow on Instagram already know this. I am finding out that I have really bad white coat syndrome. I've always had white coat syndrome but I think since I had preeclampsia with him in the hospital, I have a little bit of PTSD. I think I am dealing with past trauma from how hard my labor and delivery was and being in the hospital for a week with preeclampsia. I'm in, I just started therapy for that, by the way, uh, last week. And I think it's already helping just talking it out with somebody. I'm finding out that every time the blood pressure cuff gets put on my arm, I get panicked. And it just brings back all the memories from when I was hospitalized with him and how hard of a time that was for me. I've been tracking my blood pressures at home twice a day and they're totally fine at home. They're always in the 120s. And then as soon as I walk into my fertility clinic, my blood pressure skyrockets 
into the 150s. If my blood pressure is too high, I think the transfer would be on hold because they have already told me that they don't wanna be chasing my blood pressures when I'm pregnant. So I had my blood pressure rechecked a couple days ago at the clinic and it was initially high in the 150s, but then they had me sit for five minutes and they took a manual blood pressure and it was in the 130s, so that was acceptable to them. But as long as I can keep my blood pressure under control, AKA my anxiety and my white coat syndrome mentality now, uh, the transfer is on for July 26th. And this goes along with everything else. I think I'm just more in my head this time about it than last time. So last time I was feeling so calm. I was feeling like at peace with everything. Even though I didn't believe it was really gonna happen, I didn't really think the transfer was gonna work. I wasn't feeling panicked at all. But this time around is a whole different story, which is throwing me off. Like, why am I feeling so, I'm feeling a lot more nervous. I'm feeling anxious about the whole thing. I have very mixed emotions. Like I want another baby so badly, but I also am fearing the process because I think last time I didn't really know what I was in for. I didn't know how hard the progesterone and oil shots were gonna be. I didn't really know Know how long I would have to take them for every single day for the first trimester if it works. I had no idea how hard pregnancy is. I didn't know anything about high risk pregnancies if you're IVF pregnancy. I didn't know anything about how hard labor and delivery is, how hard postpartum is. Now the postpartum part, I'm I like I'm excited for. I like bring it on. I know what I'm doing now. He's 15 months. Like I want another baby so badly, but I want another baby without going through all the other stuff. I want to experience pregnancy again because I didn't allow myself to enjoy being pregnant with him because I was fearful of if I like was too excited about it, too happy about it, then I felt like I would jinx it and something bad was gonna happen. So I do want to experience pregnancy again so I'll allow myself to enjoy it more <laughs> second time around. But I'm also finding myself wanting another baby so much more than the first time. And I think it's because I'm already a mom that like, oh my gosh, being a mom is the best thing you'll ever experience. It's the hardest thing you'll ever experience, but it's the best thing. And I just want to give Quinn another sibling so, so badly. So I'm finding myself wanting another baby so much more than the first time around, which is a very interesting mindset for me to have going into the second time. So a lot of, a lot of mixed emotions emotions. I'm more nervous about the whole thing, knowing what I'm in for this time, knowing that it's, it's, a, it's a lot. Also, I'm nervous because the two embryos we have remaining are lower quality, lower grade than Quinn was. So I'm like, well, the chances of them working are not as high uh, as Quinn. I've just been in my head a lot, in other words. So I started therapy last week to mainly deal with past traumas. Ever since COVID hit, really, I've been through a lot. You know, COVID hit in 2020. I'm an, I was an ICU nurse during COVID. I've had to bag a lot of bodies. I've had to go through a lot with COVID and then IVF started in 2021, had to go through two egg retrieval surgeries, as you guys know, that put us into 2022. I changed jobs because I couldn't handle being an ICU nurse anymore. It was way too stressful. And then, getting pregnant and not expecting it to work and then not allowing myself to enjoy the pregnancy and then getting in, you know, getting hospitalized preeclampsia was very traumatic for me and then getting induced early. I wasn't ready, baby wasn't ready and a pretty difficult postpartum at the beginning. I think I've just been through a lot in a short period of time that I haven't allowed myself to process because I've really been in survival mode up till now with him. And now that I'm not in survival mode anymore with him, like he's, he's doing great, like he's sleeping through the night most nights, that I'm now coming around full circle, I have a little bit more time to like pro actually process things now where I didn't have any time. I didn't have any mental space to process my past traumas up until now, but now he's older to the point where, and, I, and you guys know this on Instagram, who follow on Instagram, there was four babies recently born in my family. Uh, my sister just had her baby about a month ago. And then I have three sister-in-laws that just had a baby. And I was discovering that every time somebody close to me has a baby, it would bring back all of my past traumas I've been through with IVF. Mainly it was the traumatic labor and delivery that would come to mind and I, I, I can't shake it like it's and so then with preparing for this next frozen embryo transfer all of the memories flooding back from last time it was really hard the actual transfer itself was super easy but it's all the meds that I had to take mainly those shots my mental state after I got pregnant was not good and and so it's just how do I deal with the past the past is the past the past is not now that that was then this is now how do I deal with that now that I'm not in survival 
survival mode anymore with him. So that's kind of where my mind has been at in a nutshell. Again, very different mindset than two years ago. I also have him this time. So things are already so different than the first time around two years ago when I didn't have any kids yet. So my main focus is him. Time is lacking, money is lacking. So last time around, I was able to do acupuncture pretty consistently and acupuncture, I just, I don't have time for it. I don't have the money for it this time, especially now that I'm paying for therapy. I'll do probably acupuncture maybe like a couple weeks before the transfer. I'll do a couple sessions. And then of course I'll do acupuncture right after the transfer, like I did last time. But it's just so different this time around, really because I have him, which he's a great distraction. I can't dwell too much on what's gonna happen because like my, I have to focus on him as well. This time we do know the gender of our two remaining embryos. It is gonna remain a secret. If the transfer works, then of course we will reveal what the gender is. I go off birth control. Yeah, is that right? I am supposed to go off birth control at the end of June. And then on day three of my period, I'm supposed to go in for a suppression check, which is a blood draw. And I think also an ultrasound. And then I'm supposed to start the estrogen pills, which is three times a day for me. And that happens for a few, two or three weeks, the estrogen pills. And then I do another blood draw and ultrasound to make sure my uterine lining is where it should be for the transfer. And then I start those dreaded shots, progesterone shots and also vaginal progesterone, I think six days before the transfer. And then transfer happens on the 26th of July. And then I keep continuing all the meds three times a day, um, estrogen pills, progesterone and oil shots every day and vaginal progesterone through the first trimester, whole first trimester. And that's what I had to do two years ago. It's crazy to me that we're like less than six weeks away from the transfer if it all works out how it's supposed to. I'm really trying to just stay positive and think about all the good things and the blessings and things like that and not, not dwell on negativity, not dwell on past traumas. It comes down to perspective. Whatever your attitude is, whatever your perspective is, game changing on your experience. And so that's what I'm trying to like remind myself of is like mindset is everything and your mind is connected to your body so much. For me, if I'm having like negative thoughts, if I'm dwelling on the past, it'll affect my body as well. So I'm trying to like, okay, positive, 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 yeah positive. So a little short update video for you guys. That's really about it in a nutshell. Again, if you don't follow on Instagram, I highly encourage you to because it's so much easier for me to go on my story and update you guys on what's going on than to make a whole video, edit, upload to YouTube, do a thumbnail and a description. Like it's so much easier just for me to go on my story or even just upload a reel on what's been going on. And that's kind of what I've been doing. But just keep me in your thoughts and prayers as I move forward into preparing for this frozen embryo transfer in and starting the meds. I'm just so nervous this time around and I want it so badly this time around. It's just very odd for me to experience this because I'm, I'm not normally an emotional person. I'm not really like, I'm passionate about things, but I don't really get that emotional about it. Oh my gosh, this time is just so different. So just keep me in your thoughts and prayers if you don't mind and just, help me remain calm <laughs> as we start all of this. And that's it, we're gonna take him swimming in a couple of minutes. Uh, it's about 10.30 in the morning and so it's warming up out there and he come to find out it's not like the pool. So we're trying to get him used to that. We, we're, he's in swim lessons for his protocolis. Try to correct that head tilt still. Yeah, I know, you wanna go in the pool? We'll see how this goes. All right, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you guys are doing well. Those of you who regularly comment, comment down below. I wanna know how you guys are doing. There's a few of you who just had your transfer. Let me know the results. Thank you so much for your guys' encouragement and support and love. We'll just we'll just see what happens. Um, that's all we can do, one day at a time, one step at a time. And I think, yeah get excited hit the like button if you like this video i will see you in the next one definitely planning on vlogging our transfer but before that i'll probably do another like update video on how the meds are going next month and how i'm feeling and stuff like that but i am definitely going to be vlogging our transfer again just like i did last time so stay tuned for all of that i will see you in the next one and of course always remember to be kind to yourself <laughs>